Hello everyone, this is Emil from iPhonePhotographySchool.com and in today's video I'm going to show you exactly what I did to take this image and turn it into this. And the reason why I'm making this video is that this image has become very popular on Instagram. Currently it has a few hundred likes and many people have actually asked me in the comments what tools I use to create this image. So rather than just going ahead and answering all of them individually, I thought I would make this video showing exactly what I did. So before we start, you may look at the differences between the two images. And first you'll notice that the final version is cropped. So that's what I'm going to start with and I'll go to Snapseed which is my favorite tool for pretty much all sorts of photo editing purposes and I'm going to open the original image and I'm going to crop it. So on the left side where we have all the different tools I'm going to choose crop. Now before we start I want to make sure to emphasize that even though I'm doing this on the iPad you can do all the same things on the iPhone. All the apps are the same and you can do the same things. In fact, I created the original Instagram using my iPhone because I didn't have my iPad with me that day. But I'm doing this on the iPad now just so that you can see more and so that the video looks a little bit nicer. So first I'm going to select ratio at the bottom. I'm going to select choose one by one. And The reason why I'm doing this is because Instagram images have to be squared. Okay, and if you think, look at the original image in terms of composition, perhaps it wasn't exactly perfect and that's because I really didn't have any time to create this. This was like the kind of moment where you just have to take the shot without looking at how perfect the composition is. So that's what I did. But luckily I can uh, correct this now using cropping. And I think that the right side of the image is pretty much perfect and I'll keep all of that in. In fact, I like how the boy on the right is just stepping into the image right now. I think it adds a lot of movement, motion to the image, which is awesome. But the left side of the image, mm, perhaps it's not that great, it's just an empty room. So I'm going to make it a little bit smaller on the left side, while keeping all the right side in. And I'm going to leave it at something like this. And now, if you notice, uh, we have grid lines here in Snapseed. And those are just here for you to have, uh, see the rule of thirds more clearly. And right now, the woman to the left is at the intersection of these grid lines, which is good. And also the girl on the right side is positioned perfectly on the grid line. So in terms of composition, this is pretty good already, and I'm very happy with this. So I'm going to go ahead and hit apply. And the image is cropped now. And next, I'm going to go to tune image module on the left. And if you remember, the final version of, the Im of this image will be in black and white, except for the umbrellas. And I'm going to use a different app to get that effect. effect. But before I do it, I just want to make sure to make some final adjustments to the version which is still in color in Snapseed. So what I'm going to do is first increase the contrast a little bit. And you may be wondering why. And the reason why I'm doing this is that by increasing the contrast, um, I can really emphasize how bright uh, the light on the surface is. If you look at the bottom part of the image, you see this amazing reflection from the wet surface. And if I increase the brightness a little bit, this reflection becomes even brighter and it stands out more. And I think it's really cool in this context. It also really helps me separate the people from the background, sort of, sort of saying, and that's also good here. So contrast. Uh, I'll leave it at something like 20 for now. Next, I'm going to increase saturation. Even though the image is going to be mostly black and white, the umbrellas are going to stay in color. And I think they're going to look great if the colors in the umbrellas are bright. So I'll increase the saturation quite a lot to something like 25, I think. And finally, I'll go to brightness and I'll make this just a little bit brighter. I think something like 5 should be enough here. Okay, so these are the initial adjustments I've done in Snapseed. So I'm done with these, so I can uh, hit apply now. And after that, I can use the save button to save the image. And now we're done with Snapseed. Next, 
I'm going to use another app called Color Splash, which once again, which once again works for both the iPad and the iPhone. I'm going to use the iPad here, but it's the same on the iPhone. And by the way, I already have this image here because uh, that's the last image I made using this app. But before, but I'll show you exactly how I did this. And of course, I started with loading the image. So I'll tap the load button, load photo, uh, go to camera roll, which is where I save the Snapseed image, and select this last image on the right. All right, so the app automatically made the image black and white. But the cool part is that I can just use my finger here to make any parts of the image in color, just like this with a paintbrush. Amazing, right? But I didn't want to do it exactly like this, so I'll, I'll tap undo now, and I'll only make the umbrellas in color. And I think it's gonna look great. And, oh, okay, in fact, I know it's gonna look great. And the reason why, is because the umbrellas are really bright in this image and by making them the only objects that are uh, actually in color will really help me emphasize the, the, the umbrellas and the end result is just gonna look stunning and so in order to paint the umbrellas I want to zoom in using two fingers and just start painting them like this and this may take some time but you know it's worth it even, and even if it takes you five minutes the end result is going to be so cool that it will be totally worth it. And by the way, I don't recommend being uh, being too concerned with like the accuracy at first. Of course, you want to make uh, the painting as ac like the paint brushes as accurate as you can. But the way I do this usually is that I first just make sure that the entire umbrella or the entire object is in color. And then I tap the gray button on the top, as I did right now, and then I kind of correct for mistakes. Because sometimes I just, you know, uh, highlight too much of the image, which I don't need, and then I just correct for the mistakes. And I think this is a little bit faster than just trying to do this perfectly the first time around. All right, something like this. So that's the first umbrella. Now I'll move on to the second one. Once again, I'm doing the same. I'll zoom in even more for this part. I also want that to be in color. And by the way, it's absolutely essential that you do change the zoom a lot because if you don't, this simply won't be possible. Okay. And for coloring large surfaces like here, it's actually easier to zoom out. And for narrow things like this one, it really helps to zoom in. As I said before, you can also do this on the iPhone, but it might take you a little bit more time because the iPhone screen is smaller, which makes both the coloring and the zooming a little bit more tedious, but it's definitely possible. As I said before, I actually created the original Instagram, which is still in my Instagram newsfeed using the iPhone because I didn't have my iPad that day. All right. And now I'll correct the mistakes I've made along the way. I'll zoom in a little bit here. And there. Also this part. Perhaps a little bit here. And by the way, um, if you do go over the borders, as I have in a couple of places here, it might look really bad once when you're zoomed in, but once you zoom out you won't really see that. So you have to be accurate, but you know, don't stress about this too much. Just do it and it will look fine, trust me. All right, we're almost done. Just a little bit more. A little bit over here. That's right, this corner. Now I'll select the gray. By the way, for sharp corners, it's really easy to first go over the contours and then to just correct the mistakes. Also, I don't want all this uh, green grass. And perhaps I'll make this corner a little bit bluer again. All right, and now I'm done. This is exactly what I was looking for. 
So I'm going to um, tap the save button and save to photo library. And now the image is saved and if I go to photos I'll see this which is the image I just created right now. Alright, thanks for watching uh, and if you enjoyed uh, this video tutorial please head over to iphonephotographyschool.com where I have a lot more videos, articles and more about iPhone photography so please visit my website and I hope you liked this video and stay tuned for more.